we want to tell you what we know at this point. We know the call came in shortly after 630 this morning. Police arrived at the VTA maintenance facility responding to an active shooter situation. We know there are eight shooting victims dead. The shooter is also dead. The FBI is investigating a VTA employee and have a home surrounded in San Jose. This is on Angmar Court. Still very active this afternoon. We want to get to our Justin Andrews, who has been out there for a few hours now. Justin, what is the latest from your vantage point? Lynn, this is a very intense investigation even at this noon hour. Local and federal law enforcement agencies on scene right now. You look down the street here, you see still a large area here blocked off. All hands were on deck here with this investigation. And although it's very early, only about five or so hours since those bullets went flying, we are still wanting to know the answer of why. But it could be a while before we know that answer. But here's what we do know at this noon hour. We know that a VTA worker went on a shooting spree at the VTA yard this morning around 630. This is the light rail system. As police responded, they say they heard gunshots while they were going inside there. They heard those gunshots still going, so it was still a very tense situation as those officers were entering to possibly save lives. Now, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office says eight VTA workers were shot and killed. As you mentioned earlier, the gunman is also dead this afternoon, but they have not confirmed how he died. Mayor Sam Licardo is asking his city to use today as a day to mourn. As you can imagine, very heavy hearts this afternoon for all of us, but especially for the family members of those victims. It was a moment for us to mourn. Uh, and we are, as our heart is just so pained for the, for the families, for the loved ones, those we've lost. It's the time for us to come together and support one another. And we're going to do that. This is a community that pulls together like no other in tough times. And we saw it through the pandemic. We saw it after the flood. We've seen it after so many tragedies where we see thousands of volunteers coming out, people who care passionately about supporting their community. I'm confident that we're going to support these families and the loved ones of those we've lost, and we're going to resolve to do everything we can to stop this tragedy from happening again. Investigators also tell us those fires we told you about this morning on the other side of San Jose. They're looking to see what the connection is to this VTA shooting. FBI agents are right there right now. Sources confirm to us that they are indeed connected. Again, we have been out here all morning and really the pulse is very somber. It's already bad enough even when one person is shot and killed. But this afternoon, we're talking eight victims in this shooting. We're live in San Jose this afternoon. I'm Justin Andrews, KPIX 5. And Justin, thank you. And because of everything we know that happened out there, this investigation we expect to last a very, very long time. The FBI even saying this is a sizable crime scene and will take a while to process. And we're seeing this sizable crime scene. We've been seeing this for a few hours uh, today as Chopper 5 shows us aerial views of the facility, of the building, of the rail yard as well. And this is a huge scene that they have to process. It's going to be a painstaking process. Uh, to get this investigation right, to figure out what happened, to learn more about the suspect and uh, why this shooting even happened in the first place. You know, Justin was mentioning that house uh, in, in connection with this shooting. That house is on Angmar Court and McLaughlin Avenue. And of course, there was a fire there earlier, and uh, it has been confirmed that there is a VTA employee uh, who, who lived there. And we now know as well that a VTA employee is who police say opened fire, killing eight people at that VTA facility this morning. And we also know that suspect is now dead, but still not confirmed at this hour whether that suspect was shot and killed by law enforcement or if they took their own life. Talking about, uh, you know, this painstaking process of just going through evidence, uh, it's, a, it's a huge scene that they have to process. This is part of it where you see investigators out there in that parking lot. These are obviously cars parked in there, cars uh, possibly belonging to the employees who never yeah. left that building. That is a tough sight to see because you know that some of them uh, have lost their lives. Some of them are in the hospital being treated for their injuries since we know this is a mass casualty situation. It's heartbreaking. And at the same time, 
we know that the process is still ongoing for law enforcement to notify these family members that A, their loved one might have been injured or their loved one was killed in that mass shooting. And a lot of those families are trying to figure out, uh, you, you know, what happened to their loved one. We heard from Devin Feely just a short time mm -hmm. ago, who's standing outside of the reunification center, and he's, you know, talking about people going in upset, not knowing what's going on, not coming out yet, and having to stay in there, possibly talking to grief counselors, possibly learning the worst news of their life right now. And then also just that heartbreaking story uh, of a father who was kind of confused because he knows that his son's telephone, the cell phone, is still located at the facility, but he can't get a hold of his son. Yeah, those phone calls going unanswered, hard to imagine even just how tough that is, the anguish of that kind of moment. Let's go now to Kit Doe. We mentioned that house under investigation after a fire this morning. Our Kit Doe is there live right now with more information on that scene. Kit, what's the latest out there? Lenzo, a flurry of activity out here in southeast San Jose. It looks like it's starting to wind down a little bit. A lot of the fire personnel just got in their vehicles and have driven off here. This is a uh, bomb squad unit. They're backing it in. Uh, don't know what this is for, but the bomb squad is here. A large contingent of ATF officers is here as well. And they are still looking at this house. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just beyond that dead end sign with the palm trees in front of it. That is 1178 Angmar Court. That one is confirmed to be uh, owned by Samuel Cassidy, a former VTA employee. We do know that the investigators are saying that a VTA employee was involved, but uh, we're not saying that uh, Mr. Cassidy um, was the actual suspect, but he is connected to this incident somehow. Investigators also tell us that sometime when the fire broke out this morning, there was a lot of flame inside there. When the firefighters arrived, they immediately went into a defensive mode. They could smell the gasoline. They could see a gas can. They could see uh, dozens, if not hundreds of rounds of ammunition inside. So certainly a suspicious situation out here. Uh, federal, county, and city officers are trying to figure out what exactly is going on. That's the latest from here. Back to you. Kid, what's the information we have on, on possible explosives possibly being inside that home? Anything on that at this hour? We have seen uh, two bomb techs fully dressed go inside. Uh, they were wearing uh, respirators, which is uh, unusual, but um, they went inside and we saw them come back out. The robot has also been prepared to go inside. They did not send the robot in either. So it looks like most of the personnel has gone inside and has come outside. We can see neighbors, they've escorted neighbors down in front of the street. So whatever threat that may have been there, looks like it might have been either neutralized or never really came to pass to begin with. And kid, what law enforcement agencies are they having a hard time seeing exactly who was out there? Uh, break down for us who we're seeing and, and who's investigating on that particular scene. Uh, we did see about a dozen ATF officers out here. They look to be um, perhaps a lead agency, but uh, not a lot of uh, people talking just yet. A large San Jose police contingent, including their bomb squad. Do not see any uh, sheriff's deputies out here. And we did see at least one person wearing an FBI vest. So, and it looks like some neighbors are coming out here. In fact, they're just walking right in front of the crime scene there. So, uh, yeah, whatever, if there is a threat out here, it looks to be minimal at this point.